Hey guys, good morning. We're Team Rotor Guys, and today we're going to talk to you about externally pressurized tilt pad porous gas bearings, measurements of displacement due to static load, and pad permeability coefficient. The team consists of Brian Rodriguez, Jose Torres, Don Van Hewick, and Kareem Fahori. So let's begin. Before discussing our experimental procedure and results, we would like to first introduce the different types of gas bearings and their possible benefits and drawbacks. The oldest types of gas bearings is the typical cylindrical gas bearing, which has been in use since before the 1960s. These can be either hydrostatic, meaning they're externally pressurized, or hydrodynamic. The foil bearing is another type of gas bearing that consists of a top foil in contact with the journal and an inner bump foil that provides damping. These are good for sustaining thermal expansion and operating without the need for external pressurization. However, these tend to get worn rather quickly, creating the need for a solid lubricant coating on the top foil to reduce friction. Externally pressurized gas bearings overall provide near frictionless motion and often reduce the number of working components. However, they are limited in their load capacity, damping, and stability when compared to the conventional mineral oil lubricated bearing. Quick and precise manufacturing of externally pressurized porous gas bearings became available until the late 2000s. A porous gas bearing manufacturer made tests with their technology possible. San Andres and students provide extensive experimental results quantifying the static and dynamic performance of externally pressurized tilting pad gas bearings in both small and large scales as presented since 2015. Our goal for this project was to characterize a rotor bearing system that uses porous carbon graphite bearings by determining their permeability coefficient and static stiffness at supercritical speeds. In doing this, we first had to revamp our test rig, which is described in more detail later on. Then we determined at what pressure the rotor lifted off of the bearings. We found the system natural frequency in order to know what speeds are considered supercritical. We measured the flow rate through the pads and calculated the permeability coefficient. Finally, we measured how much the rotor moved downwards when we applied a certain load in order to determine the stiffness. Howdy, my name is Don Van Hyke and I'm here to give a description of our test rig from our project. This rig is one of the ones used in the rotor lab uh, by Dr. San Andreas and others for various experiments since 2015. The rig consists of two bearings and a loading mechanism in between them. Each bearing is comprised of a series of porous graphite tilting pads. The tilting pads are then hooked up through a air supply line to a pressurized air reservoir, which pumps the air through the graphite and creates a stream of air, which creates a film that supports the rotor when it's spinning. The loading mechanism is hooked up to a strain gauge load cell, which uh, measures the the force of the load during testing. There are a pair of eddy current sensors which measure the displacement in the X and Y directions of the rotor during the test. Each bearing is supposed to have five graphite pads. However, due to damage that some of the pads have sustained in previous experiments, they're limited to three, which are set up in a load between pads uh, configuration and the loading mechanism itself has four of the pads attached to it. The whole thing is driven by an AC motor, and that's about it. The first step we took was to determine the natural frequency of the system. We did this by conducting a simple impact load test in which we placed an accelerometer on one side of the rotor and used a rubber mallet to hit the opposite side of the rotor. A frequency analyzer shows the Fourier transform of the accelerometer readings, which depict a clear peak at a certain frequency, and we take this peak to represent the natural frequency of the system. We did this for supply pressures of 5.8, 6.5, 7.2, and 7.9 bar, as well as with and without the static loader installed. Determining the pressure at which the rotor lifts off was also fairly straightforward. We started with the bearings completely unpressurized and then slowly added pressure in increments of 0.14 bar. There comes a pressure at which the rotor can suddenly spin freely which is very noticeable by attempting to spin the rotor by hand. We took this pressure to be our liftoff pressure. The bearings we tested are made of carbon graphite, where the material's natural permeability restricts the flow of air into the bearing. This permeability can be quantified by the permeability coefficient estimated from Forstheimer's law. The higher the permeability coefficient of the material, the more air is permitted to flow through. 
The permeability coefficient is a function of mass flow rate and supply pressure. We measure these by using a flow meter upstream of the bearings and using a pressure regulator to control the flow of air. Measurements were taken in increments of 0.14 bar from 0 to 8 bar supply pressure. Our last step was to determine the stiffness of the rotor bearing system by applying a downward force on the rotor and using eddy current sensors to, to measure the rotor's displacement. We started by pressurizing the bearings to 5.8 bar. Next, we pressurized the static loader to 7.9 bar where we then recorded the rotor displacement and applied load. Next, what we did is increase the static loader pressure and again record the rotor displacement and applied load. We repeated these for static loader pressures of 6.5, 5.1, and 3.8 bar to build the stiffness curve for the pressure under that supply pressure. The entire process is then repeated for bearing supply pressures of 6.5, 7.2, and 7.9 bar and for rotor speeds of 0, 10.8, and 11.8 kRPM. Shown here are the system critical speeds obtained from performing impact load tests. As we expected, the critical speed of the system showed a slight increase as the bearing supply pressure was increased. The installation of the static loader also had a large effect on the critical speed and natural frequency of the system. We took the average critical speed across all supply pressures to be 9800 RPM. Therefore, we conducted our stiffness measurements at 10,800 and 11,800 RPM to ensure that we are running supercritical during our tests. In addition, we found that the pressure at which the rotor lifts off was about 2.25 bar, equivalent to a mass flow rate of 0.35 grams per second. We produced six sets of measurements to estimate permeability coefficients in each individual bearing and in the whole system and compare them to those reported in the literature. Flow rate versus supply pressure measurements show a small change between the test with and without the rotor. However, there is a significant difference between the flow measurements from the drive end bearing compared to the non-drive end bearing. The estimated permeability coefficient in the drive end bearing is almost 1.2 times larger than the non-drive end bearing. This is likely due to the wear and tear in the paths installed in the non-drive end bearing. Even with the large differences, the derived permeability coefficients for both bearings, that is 2.4 e to the minus 12 meters squared, lie within the reported values in the literature. Although those reported by 2020 by Bolin and Dr. San Andres are higher than those estimated from flow measurements into both bearings simultaneously. The following charts depict the rotor displacement versus static load as obtained by applying the Euclidean norm to the displacement measurements in the orthogonally positioned eddy current sensors. The maximum static loads could only apply a specific load of 10.3 kPa for all rotor speeds due to concerns in the integrity of the rotor bearing system. The results for the highest supply pressure and no rotor speed show a lower displacement compared to those curves obtained with a lower supply pressure. In the case of the measurements with a rotor speed of 10.8 kRPM, the measurements show a linear trend and depict a larger displacement compared to the test with no rotor speed. In this case, the supply pressure of 5.8 bar show a different trend compared to the measurements with the other supply pressures. Furthermore, the measurements with the largest rotor speed show a larger displacement compared to the same range of loads applied in the system with lower rotor speeds. Linear curve fits with a correlation coefficient R squared larger than 90%, 90% produce estimated static stiffness coefficients. The coefficients show a decrease, decreasing trend with increasing rotor speed. The results greatly vary with those reported by Bowen in 2020. The current coefficients are around an order of magnitude lower than those estimated by Bowen. Additionally, the magnitude of the specific loads in the test are also one order of magnitude of order lower than those reported in the literature. Thus, the current test results were greatly affected by the low load range of 100 to 185 newtons applied on the rotor. The project conclusions are, the static loader is effectively a third bearing, thus changing the system natural frequency and rotor dynamic performance. The system natural frequency changes little with increase in supply pressure. Contrary to what might be expected, the stiffness of the bearing system is decreased with increasing rotor speed. The derived static stiffness coefficients disagree with results obtained with similar experimental setup. The discrepancy is likely due to the reduced load range in the measurements.
The displacement measurements show near invariant stiffness coefficients, thus demonstrating the supply pressure does not affect the film stiffness. The permeability coefficients found were comparable to past experiments.